This episode is brought to you by NordPass. Click the link in the description below. Imagine a world where blindness and deafness can be reversed, or never forgetting a name, face, or date. Being able to augment the brain power we're born with to offload memories and correct human maladies. That's what Elon Musk and the team at Neuralink are setting out to do. But is this the future of humanity or just a dream? Let's take a closer look at Neuralink. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. So what is Neuralink? Well, it's a company that's focused on building out a type of brain-computer interface, or BCI, which can have many different names and classifications. But it all boils down to building an interface that can read and interpret the signals given off by the neurons firing away in our brains. This type of research goes all the way back to 1924, when Hans Berger, a German psychiatrist, used electroencephalography, or EEG, to record human brain activity. It's a process that uses electrodes to measure the electrical activity of the brain. The first tests were probably a little uncomfortable, given that he inserted wires under the patient's scalp to make the recording. Now, thankfully, these were later replaced by attaching silver foils to the outside of the head. But imagine how those first patients felt when they found that bit out. It wasn't until 1973 that the term BCI was coined by UCLA professor Jacques Vidal. In a 1977 experiment, he was able to use an EEG to control an object on a computer screen and move it around a maze. Since that time, there have been quite a few different approaches and advancements made in how to read signals from the brain, like being able to map motor cortex neurons to control a robotic arm, which is something that was demonstrated in the 1980s with rhesus macaque monkeys. And in some late 1990s research at the University of California, Berkeley, they were able to reproduce images seen by cats by deciphering their neuron activity. In the early 2000s, 16 patients received a second generation visual cortex electrode implant to partially restore the ability to see shades of light. So you can start to see why so many people are excited by BCI research. There are three basic forms of BCI, invasive, partially invasive, and non-invasive. The electrode implants that were attached to the visual cortex would be considered invasive. Partially invasive is when an implant is placed inside the skull but rests outside the brain and doesn't intrude into it. And something like an EEG that attaches to the outside of the scalp is non-invasive. On that scale, Neuralink would be considered invasive. But how does it work? Well, it all starts with Neuralink's Link, which is a sealed device about 23 millimeters in diameter and eight millimeters tall. Inside is a little computer that processes, stimulates, and transmits neural signals. Extending from the coin-shaped link are a series of neural threads with multiple probes and electrodes, which are carefully threaded into the brain. This invasive approach can take a far more accurate reading of brain activity than a non-invasive approach. There's an analogy that constantly comes up around this. It's like a stadium where each seat is a neuron firing off and making noise. An EEG is like being outside the stadium and trying to understand what's going on with the game inside. You can only really tell if a team scored or something exciting happened. But if you move inside the stadium, the voices become clearer and you can start to make more sense of the play-by-play. -play. Move even closer and you eventually can ask a specific neuron what they think of the game. Built into the neural link system is the ability to track things like orientation, temperature, and pressure. It's able to track a lot of the same things that your phone and smartwatch can do, or as Elon put it. It's more complicated than this, but it's, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. The rationale behind collecting all this extra data beyond just what the neurons are doing is that combining all of that collected data will someday unlock the ability to predict early signs of dangerous conditions, like a stroke or a heart attack. Now, it can also charge inductively, like your phone or watch, so it should be easy to top off the charge every day without physical wires needing to be hooked through the body. But it's how they install the link that's absolutely amazing. They designed a robot that can complete the very delicate threading procedure. The incredible small size and detail work that's needed to be done is more than a human can pull off reliably. So automated robotics are necessary to do this quickly and safely. The ultimate goal is an automated surgery that can happen in less than an hour. And don't worry, I won't get graphic with the actual details of the procedure. <laughs> I don't like that stuff myself. But it entails opening a small flap of your scalp, drilling a small hole through the skull, threading the electrodes, and inserting the link to fill the hole. After sealing the flap of skin, there's no sign that you've had the procedure done at all. And during the demonstration they put on last year, they showed a couple of pigs, one with an active neural link and the other who had one removed, to show how safe it could be. The neural link in the active pig was connected to the neurons that controlled the snout, so they were playing real-time audio signals to represent the data that they were reading from the firing neurons. So on the screen, um, you can see 
each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if, she, yeah, if she snuffles around, touches this knot in the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching this knot. They also demonstrated being able to predict the location of the pig's limbs by interpreting the neural data that the link was receiving with pretty high accuracy. Being able to read and understand someone's intentions for moving a limb can potentially be applied to restoring movement to someone with paralysis. But it's not just reading data that they're focused on. They also showed off that each data channel is capable of writing or triggering neurons by giving off an electrical charge. Again, this could be used to treat any number of disorders. The overall presentation was impressive and showed off their product design methodology from creating a system that's safe and easy to install, unnoticeable when you have one, and safe to remove and upgrade later. But this is where I need to emphasize what Neuralink is not. But before I get to that, I want to touch on security for a minute. And no, I'm not talking about the security issues of wiring your computer into your brain, which Neuralink is taking a lot of precautions around. I'm talking about in our daily lives. You need to create more and more complex passwords for the websites and services that we use to stay as secure as possible. And today's sponsor, NordPass, can really help with that. NordPass lets you generate super complex and unique passwords for each website that you use and store them all in one place. Then all you have to remember is your password to NordPass. I've been using a password manager for quite a while and I'll never, ever go back. NordPass makes things even easier by autofilling your usernames and passwords with one click. So it makes logging into websites a more seamless experience. But one thing that's been incredibly useful to me is being able to share passwords with family and coworkers securely. Sending a password through email or text message is not a great idea. Best of all, it's powered by NordVPN security professionals who know a thing or two about security. For a limited time, grab the one year NordPass premium plan with 50% off at nordpass.com undecided or use the code undecided. Thanks to NordPass and to all of you for supporting the channel. Getting back to what Neuralink is not, it's not a real product yet. It's early days of turning decades of research into a working consumer product. Their initial goal is to use the technology to help those with paralysis and injury gain some independence back. Being able to think of typing out a message on your phone to actually have it do it. Think what you wanna do on your computer and it just happens. It's kind of like telepathy. This has a direct link back to the research I mentioned earlier. Being able to help people with visual, auditory, or motor control issues is the ultimate goal. Now, Neuralink isn't alone in this field by any stretch. There are companies like Paradromics in Austin, Texas, that are also trying to help people with conditions like paralysis or blindness. Or Neurable, which is a Boston-based startup that's focusing on EEG-style devices to control computer interfaces with a set of brain-sensing consumer headphones. And an even more direct competitor to Neuralink is BIOS from the UK, which has a similar implant technology to help enhance and improve different health conditions. The biggest difference between the other companies and Neuralink is really their approach and vision. Much like every other one of Elon's companies, there's a bit of controlled chaos with how it's run. An engineering-focused, first principles thinking, incredible pressure cooker to push the envelope. And delivering on accelerated timelines reportedly created some internal strife, especially with some of the people that were more attuned to the methodical scientific research approach. After their last public event, there were a few notable criticisms of the event for overselling what's possible. The MIT Technology Review published an article that called it neuroscience theater since none of what they saw proposed for the future is doable yet. And what Neuralink did show wasn't anything new or groundbreaking in the realm of BCI research. While the critiques weren't necessarily wrong, many of them missed some of the nuances of the presentation. It was stated multiple times in the presentation that this was a recruiting tool for more researchers, doctors, and engineers, getting those who want to be part of building the future excited to join the team. It wasn't meant as a demo for the public to get excited about getting one implanted into their heads tomorrow. Elon also made comparisons to other consumer products, like the fact that the Neuralink has over 100 times more data channels than the next best consumer device. Going from research to product is a huge leap, especially in the medical field. So we're still years away, if not decades away, from more of the aspirational things they talked about. What Neuralink is doing, trying to bring a product to market from the lab is a Herculean task. On the flip side, there were also voices that were very impressed by the presentation. I am amazed by the rapid progress in the device architecture to enable seamless prototype and pigs. The best part was seeing the prediction of movement versus actual movement. In terms of the technology, 1024 channels is not that impressive these days, but the electronics to relay them wirelessly is state of the art, and the robotic implementation is nice. 
but this is where I start to get a little conflicted. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all say about it in the comments because <laughs> I am torn. I get so excited to see what we as a species are capable of when we put our minds to it. The fact that we're at the very beginning of the journey towards mapping the human brain and potentially being able to cure diseases and disabilities is awe-inspiring. Neuralink may not be revolutionizing specific BCI research yet, but they're tackling the engineering feat of making it a reality. But some of what could be a potential down the road is as terrifying as it is amazing. What will it mean if we can actually offload memories or load memories that are not even our own? I got flashbacks to the movie Strange Days with Angela Bassett and Rafe Fiennes, where there's a black market for memory trading. And the line between what's real and what's not, like a fabricated memory, really starts to be blurred. Like I said, this technology amazes and <laughs> terrifies me all at the same time for what it could mean decades down the road. It doesn't help when I hear that Facebook is working on BCI technology too. <laughs> yeah, I don't want Facebook anywhere near my neurons. If we don't act responsibly and ethically today with the development of this technology and put proper guidelines and controls in place, we're creating ripples into the future that could turn into damaging waves or tsunamis. At the very least... I mean, this is obviously sounding increasingly like a Black Mirror episode. But yeah, essentially, if, if you have a whole brain interface, everything that's encoded in memory, you could, uh, you could upload. You could basically store your memories um, as a backup. And ultimately, you could potentially download them into a new body or into a robot body. The future is going to be weird. Bring it back closer to today, there's so much amazing potential for what Neuralink is working on. I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing future updates from the company as well as their competitors. So what do you think of Neuralink? Would you get one? <laughs> Jump in the comments and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. And as always, thanks to all of my patrons and a shout out to new producer Paul Brarin from TinkerTry.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.